first retrograde journey from collective tubule and ducts toward the proximal convoluted tubule. We are going to discuss osmotic diuretics in this lecture. Osmotic diuretics take effects at the descending loop of Hanley. This is the list of objectives for this lecture. First of all, let's quickly review the physiological function of descending loop of Hanley. Over here, osmolarity of urinary filtrate is increasing as more and more water is being reabsorbed into the blood. The reabsorption of water leads to increasing concentration of salt by three times in the luminal filtrate. Osmotic diuretics work right here. Osmotic diuretics do not create strong diuresis. They are simple hydrophilic substance that can be easily filtered and passed through the membrane from glomerulose into the luminal filtrate. These medications increase osmolarity of the filtrate. Reabsorption of water is then disturbed. Naturally, water moves into the urinary lumen to dilute the hyperosmolar fluid. Comparing to other diuretics that we have discussed in the previous lectures, osmotic diuretics differ because they increase water excretion more than sodium excretion. Therefore, they are not effective for sodium retention condition. They maintain urine flow, and they account for the major treatment for increased intracranial pressure with cerebral edema and renal failure caused by decreasing renal flow, drug toxicity, or trauma. Osmotic diuretics belong to the therapeutic class of diuretics. Medications in this category include mental and urea. Osmotic diuretics are given via intravenous route. As the medication being kept in the bloodstream, water will be attracted to stay inside the blood, which results in expansion of extracellular water, leading to dehydration. Hypo or hypertension could be resulted. As the extracellular fluid being increased, vascular overload and heart failure can be resulted along with other cardiovascular adverse effects. Osmotic diuretics are used to treat condition with increased intracranial pressure, such as cerebral edema. As the fluid status or intracranial pressure being shifted, central nervous system symptoms result. CNS side effects can manifest as seizure, headache, dizziness, or fever. The other major adverse effect is pulmonary edema, which results from altered osmolarity of extracellular fluid. As the medication is given intravenously, the injection site reactions should not be neglected. Osmotic diuretics are used to treat acute conditions and can only be given intravenously. With that said, Patient receiving this temporary therapy is hospitalized or under nursing surveillance. Therefore, monitoring and management of adverse effects are mainly the registered nurse's responsibility. When giving any medication that can affect cardiovascular system, monitoring blood pressure and heart rate is the most basic required care. We will monitor the patient's vital signs prior to and throughout the entire therapy. Instruct the client of signs and symptoms of adverse effects and reporting side effects if experienced. For acute and serious adverse effects, including seizure, pulmonary edema, and heart failure, notify physician at once. Initiate and maintain full precaution and seizure precaution when patient is receiving osmotic diuretic. Monitor level of consciousness. Don't let the patient get out of bed alone. Provide assistance and surveillance when patient is out of bed. Instruct the patient's signs and symptoms of orthostatic hypotension and care for preventing orthostatic hypotension, including changing position from lying to sitting, from sitting to standing, slowly.
allowing two to five minutes gap between position change for the blood pressure to adjust itself. Monitor and report to physician if dehydration or electrolyte imbalances noticed. Administer medications according to the physician's order. Monitor and assess IV site. Change IV site if filtration or other reactions noted. Patient should be put on strict intake and output measuring and monitoring. Encourage fluid intake as prescribed. Osmotic diuretics are indicated for oliguria, for both prevention and treatment. Acute renal failure, increased intracranial pressure associated with cerebral edema. Drug intoxication, urinary bladder irrigation. An osmotic diuretic has a teratogenic effect. It may cause fetal hypocalcemia and bone abnormality if given to expectant mother more than five to seven days. It is not recommended to use osmotic diuretics during pregnancy unless the condition is clearly indicated. If need to use osmotic diuretic during pregnancy, the expectant mother should be well informed of possible teratogenic effect. Osmotic diuretic is definitely contraindicated during active labor. Other contraindications include myocardial damage, heart block, and comatose. Osmotic diuretics should be used with caution when patient has impaired renal function and during breastfeeding. Thorough medical history intake and physical examination is vital for assessing usage of osmotic diuretics. Inform the physician if the female client is pregnant. The expectant mother needs to be well informed and fully understand the risk of possible harm to fetus prior to consent to the therapy. It is the registered nurse's responsibility to ensure that the clients have been well informed by the physician. Should the mother or family have any question, the registered nurse can restate what the physician has explained or better yet, ask the physician back to provide further clarification as needed. Manitol increases excretion of lithium into urine. When using with nephrotoxic medications, such as aminoglycosides and cyclosporine, mannitol could increase risk of nephrotoxicity and renal failure. It is not advised to use osmotic diuretics with sodium phosphates. When used together, osmotic diuretic can enhance the nephrotoxic effects of sodium phosphates. If used together with mannitol, Opioids can affect osmotic diuretics in two ways. It can decrease the therapeutic effects and at the same time increases the adverse effects of the osmotic diuretics. Make a list of all medications that the patient is taking. Monitor medication levels when on lithium. Do not use osmotic diuretics with nephrotoxic medication together, including tobramycin, sodium phosphates, aminoglycosides, and cyclosporine. When used with opioids analgesic, closely monitor the client and the therapy effect. Electrolyte levels could be increased or decreased during osmotic diuretic therapy. Osmotic diuretics can also alter the levels of inorganic phosphorus and ethylene glycol. Nursing care tailoring for drug-to-lab interactions includes having the knowledge that these lab results might not be accurate and other assessment or examination should be implemented for better clinical judgment. We have discussed most nursing care throughout this lecture. Here are some extra tips. Osmotic diuretics are given intravenously. Educate the client to promptly report any discomfort at IV site. Maintain IV patency and IV site to prevent reactions. Insert and maintain a urinary catheter as prescribed for patients who are incontinent or unconscious. 
accurately measure hourly urine output with a urometer when the patient is on indwelled urinary catheter. Implement strict intake and output, INO. When patient is on blood transfusion, add at least 20 mL equivalent of sodium chloride to each liter of drug solution to avoid pseudoagglutination. Mannitol is the most commonly used osmotic diuretic. Urea is associated with hypernatremia because of excretion of electrolyte-free water. Thank you for spending time with me. I look forward to seeing you in our next lecture.